Welcome to Hanging Out with Robert, that's me. This video is composed of things that I tinkered with throughout the day. For step-by-step -step detailed instructions of those tasks, you can click on the links in the comment section below. This video should contain tips and tricks of things that I've learned throughout the year. Now, I only plan on leaving this video posted for about 30 days. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much for watching. On my way to help somebody with a radiator replacement, and man, cleaned up the outside of Panther yesterday. Look at the reflection in that black. That is a good looking car. 95 T5. I'm going to go ahead and do the radiator on it real quick so I can get her her car back. I got the radiator from Swedish Car Parts. If you guys remember, the other day is leaking a little bit of fluid right under this upper hose. And these things have a tendency to just explode. So that's not something you want to ignore. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the intercooler pipe up here. Take these bolts out of this radiator and get rolling. At any rate, again, all this stuff is linked in the comments section. Man, I don't know what all that is. It looks like a Buster Brown move. Three or four screws on both sides of the radiator top. Yikes. Interesting warning on the box that the radiator came in from Swedish Car Parts. They want the system flushed and then a 50-50 mix and they specified distilled water. This is a Cryomax radiator believed to be a very good quality among radiators as radiators are concerned. It has the transmission and the oil coolers and it has the proper type of drain plug that you find on the Volvo radiators which I think are uh, Valio or something like that. At any rate, I wanted to make sure that it had all the connections for the turbo cars before I took the one out. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the old one out, put the new one in. Took the cooler lines loose with the snap ring pliers, letting that drain down. So that is the horrible looking transmission fluid that I'm going to recommend gets flushed out of here probably going to put an oil cooler on this car because that transmission fluid looks horrible now i'm going to go to the other side and do the same with the oil cooler which will probably be about the same amount of oil just taught myself a little trick i disconnect the lower line before i disconnect the upper line that way no oil leaks out of the upper port it only leaks out of the lower port now that I have all that loose, I'm going to unbolt the mounts to lower the radiator and then I'm going to take the sandwich apart condenser intercooler radiator. Looks like I got another Buster Brown over here. Bottom side of the radiator's got this weird wing nut situation. Taught myself another little trick. Take the driver's side of the radiator loose first and all the rest of the coolant will dump out then take the passenger side loose side with most parts these days is you don't get none of the supportive hardware so you got to transfer all of your old clips and stuff like that over to your new part even these bushings this radiator i took out that side of the radiator was busted so i didn't have any supported hardware for that side good deal for me i'm at the shop so they had a couple things i needed so before you order your parts make sure you have everything you need if you don't you might want to get new supportive hardware i have everything back together except this tube and i have my flush stat in right there so i'm going to add a gallon of distilled water Run it for a couple minutes, drain that out, and just flush out all of this mixed up coolant. Added the water. I don't see anything leaking under the car. So I'm going to fire it up for two or three minutes, drain and fill it again. I saved that amount of water so I could do a 50-50 mix. I'm going to go ahead and do that with this 100%. And then I'm going to drain the system in a couple of minutes. 
And after I drain the system, I'm going to pour this 100% in there. Uh, after I swap the thermostat out and use this here for topping it off. So I got a 50-50 mix in there. I'm going to go ahead and shut the car off, drain what's in there, and then put in that 100% GO5 Z-Rex. Over and over and over again, I get people that mix other coolants in with these systems after I've flushed them and put Z-Rex in them. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get a picture of one of these or make some kind of label so I can put it in their um, glove box. Or I'm going to cut this part out of a bottle and use some trim tape, you know, molding trim, 3M type, and stick this thing to the coolant bottle so people can remember what kind of coolant I've added in here so they'll quit mixing this crap. While that's draining, I'm going to go ahead and pull this thermostat, flush thermostat, put the real thermostat back. Again, that uh, bleeder pin goes about uh, 2 o'clock in there. It's a whaler. Hadn't been in there long. I put this in there not too long ago. And then I'm going to close this up and top it off. Pour the balance of that 50-50 GO5 mix in the bottle. And I'm going to give the bottle to the vehicle owner like I usually do. So maybe they'll keep up with it this time. We'll start the car. Leak check everything one more time. And then deliver it back to the lady. The car sucked all it down so this bottle's empty. So she needs to get the still water in case she needs to top that off. I'm running the car to make sure that the cooling fan works because you just got to make sure that works before you shut these cars down. You don't want them to overheat accidentally. So let me let it run idle, see if the cooling fan comes on. Been idling a few minutes. It hadn't cut on yet, but it's only up to 209. Needed to get the 216 so this thing could turn on, the fan could cut on. Up to 213. Right there. Did you hear the fan cut on? Mm -hmm. Go up front, see if you hear the fan running. Yeah. Okay. All right, the fan came on. It should cut off at 206. Yeah, I hear it. Yeah. Uh, just going to drop it? All right, it, it just shut off at 206. Oh, okay days ago I destroyed this oil pan uh, bolt so what I did yesterday was got a metal file and filed it down so instead of a 17 it's now a 16 so I'm going to tap the socket on there and I'm going to try to hit it with my Harbor Freight impact gun to see if it breaks it loose let's see how that works out of the AC and I don't see a seal in there at all so let me put this seal in i just got close this back up hopefully we'll be good to go servicing the ac i found the seal it hit the ground looks like it just wasn't thick enough to create a seal so i'm gonna go back in with the one on the left the fat one and i should be good to go all right i got that hooked up so that's good to go my bolt extraction was a fail so I'm going to let the shop put it up on the lift, knock it out with an air hammer. Next, I'm going to put these fog lights in, 
uh, put these grills in, then that's probably going to do it for today for me. Look at this tire. Awesome tread on it. Looks like it has lots of life. But if you look in the cracks, in the tread, you see cracks in it. This tire is no good. And if you look at the date, the fifth week of 2009, it's just simply too old. And this is actually a directional tire. So it may have been a good performance style tire. Well, guess what folks? Queen B baby. Rocking now. Also have racing stripes. I'm going to give to whoever buys the car. If they want to put them on, they can. Adds a little contrast on the car. Give a little, little bit more uh, character. Somebody asked where these gauges sit before I start the car. That's where they sit. This one looks like it's been taken off too. I just filled it up. This is where it goes to where, when it's full. And this is Queen Bee. I think that gas gauge needle was removed a little bit lower. Looked like the temp needle is too. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.